lab test. After a while, you are going through the same kind of complication lab, consulting with another doctor. And he also tell you to the same kind of test. Then, wouldn't it be worth or effective if you have your if you have the previous test results of that test you have gone through. That's why we thought of implementing an e-medical platform my care, a mobile application together with the web application where you can maintain all your medical information properly. There you just have to do it, take a scan image of the document or the lab test and upload it to the system. Here we give an ID for all the patients who registered in our system and by using that ID, the doctors get the privilege to access, access their information. Uh, not only that, think you were admitted to a hospital under critical condition, then the doctors may no need to run several tests to identify your medical background. To this lab, all your medical history is in one place. At a glance on this, the doctors may know what kind of situation, what kind of medications or the allergies you have gone through and prepare the, prepare the treatments as soon as possible. So we think this will be a great option. Thank you.
welcome Team Brotherhood. Ready, set, hit. According to Gartner Research, over 70% of global organizations will be gamified by 2014. Considering this demand, do we have enough creative-minded gamification companies to supply for this demand? Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. That is where we have come from. I'm Vidhu from Team Brotherhood. We believe that gaming principles could be applied in real world to solve real world problems. As our project, we are developing a gamified sales rep improvement platform. Sales managers have difficulty in increasing the performance of their sales team. They have so many questions in their head. They want to know how to motivate their sales team. They want to know how to get a peer-to-peer -peer interactive system incorporated in their sales team. As a solution, we bring forward S Team, a gamified sales platform in which the sales manager gets to create a game to set the sales metrics, to get the sales reps as players, and also to set the reward system. As a player, I will be having my own personalized avatar and a profile through which I will be able to access the leaderboard and also badges will be given to me according to the performance of myself. On the other hand, managers will be getting a virtualized report of the each and every sales, sales rep's performance. The uniqueness of our platform is that we have incorporated peer-to-peer -peer learning system and we award people to actually involve in that peer-to-peer -peer learning system especially. Our target market, sales departments, of big corporates. Our review model, that's very simple. We give the customer for free to prove the effectiveness of our solution. And then we charge monthly according to the value that we add for the company. In conclusion, we want to create a hassle-free sales improvement platform through gamification. We offer it for you. Thank you. So, uh, you welcome our audience. Join us for so, how does the platform work? Are you linking your system to the actual sales data? Basically, we are, we are creating this uh, system and we are being up to incorporate the sales uh, data and everything of the company. So, that uh, basically it's an automated version of the sales system, especially targeting to improve the performance of those sales reps. So, different companies have their own. Uh, Sales system. So, how are we going to do it? We are going to do a customized version for each and every company. So, you are going to basically replace the existing sales system? So, uh, we are going to basically incorporate the uh, uh, customized system. I got it. Yeah, but, but the thing is, the reality of this world is all the big organizations have their own sales system. It is a very sophisticated system, ERP and all so forth. It has taken years to implement. So, why would they start that and buy something like this? Unless you integrate and give us give a gamification, performance, review system, or something like that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, 
current uh, ERG or, or the system have an analytics component now, what would you offer on top of it? Because he's already integrated, he's already in phase. So, given that current modern day solutions have the analytics in view, how would you differentiate it? I think probably, I mean, to ask my question, uh, would be the peer-to-peer -peer model, right? Could you explain that a bit more?
because basically when we are going to throw a party or organize the event, the suppliers for us as final consumers is what else and all the people who are doing arrangements like towers and so you like all sides of this technology towards the brand as well as the team to provide the menu. Uh, yeah. The hotels is already having the website, but uh, when, uh, when it comes to uh, the uh, snow hotels, uh, they are not much published. Right? So in this system, they have to, they have the opportunity to publish themselves. So for example, like I'm planning a wedding, so just like everything from with the wedding car to the layout of the place to the to the decor, so everything can be visualized. Because uh, in our system, we are going to register the hotels in first place, and thirty. Over 250 million people are 
affected by natural disasters in past decade. As a result, 200 billion dollars in assets are wasted. And world, according to World Bank record and World Bank researchers, the credit if we have more accurate disaster prediction, we can say we could save 23,000 lives and 30 billion dollars per year in global. And never before technology has been able to predict natural disaster precisely to save lives and assets. The, uh, Sri Lanka and pop, uh, popular island, na island nation. The problem is uh, predicting the weather and disaster and evacuation to clear a safe area. As a solution, we at Team Elbrain created a device called Pacuma. It is simply an inexpensive device used bioelectronic signals from plant cells to predict more and more accurate prediction. Then you can save your lives and assets. My team is passionate and experienced in bioelectronic signal processing and ask questions regarding how device works and how uh, this device saves your lives. Thank you. May I have how does the correlation between biometric signal and predicting, accurately predicting disaster being established by uh, uh, research team of University of Boston already proved the technology, but they don't implement these things. They, uh, by their research, they have put plants, uh, plants communicate by using biomagnetic waves. But thing is, they have not implemented is the biomagnetic wave, as I mentioned, as some difference when they, when we get an earthquake or tsunami, let's say storm. The magnetic wave is varying at some level, right? What we are going to do? We are getting these variations and we map it to some uh, diseases like tsunami and earthquakes. Uh, yeah, I don't think there is something called a biomagnetic unless you want to get into quantum biology. So given that, I don't think uh, there is something of this nature. Going back to your pitch, you had some very accurate numbers. Yeah. How did you get to this? Uh, the experiment and research in progress. Uh, we are uh, we are trying to calculate these things, but we already found the plant uh, elect some electric signals from plants. Yeah. Uh, in terms of damage caused, annually damage caused, you had very accurate numbers for that. How yeah. did you come to that? Uh, as I found, the plant send signal to each plant, let's say tsunami is not problem. Yes, I didn't get it. When you were defining the problem, you were yes. saying annually the damage caused by natural disasters, ah. X dollars, etc. Yes. How did you come to that? Uh, I got from the internet. Uh, I got some of them from the World Bank website and some of them uh, Wikipedia websites. Sure, if it's that accurate, yeah. then can't you use those same platform for detection? Uh, same platform for community. Yeah, no, I mean, whatever platform they use for the detector for, to tell you how many dollars worth of damage it is, yeah. it seems very accurate, right? And you could, then your problem is solved. Uh, no, but we need the accuracy, right? The, the, the Indian technology, what they're doing, they are predicting by using the present technology, but uh, never before technology was able to predict precisely. Before the disaster, right? Uh, we can predict some layers. We can predict tsunami. The, the recent tsunami in Sri Lanka. We get after earthquake start. Before earthquake, before earthquake start, we can predict, right? In this system, uh, you have heard about the plant, and uh, this is very old story. 
plant can sense before the happening. Even the animals. Beavers also can sense, but the thing is, beavers cannot understand what they sense in the present life. So, practically, this is like the holy grail. If you can solve this problem, you forget the task, you can be, you can be the, the basically run the world in some sense. Uh, because, I mean, you see, you are trying to predict the future and trying to find one part of the world is trying to find some indicator to do that. Yeah. Uh, My feeling is, if it is, there are problems that seem to be sometimes too good to be true. So, if this is doable, uh, my question is, why not anybody else done that? Because this is such an interesting thing to do. I think, what you are trying to do is, I think, is there is a, Part of this is uh, probably a big research project because uh, uh, so in order to do something like a startup, you need to have something that you have a certain bit of success. The problem with something like this is there might be very little certain of success and a lot more work needs to be done before you can figure out how to prototype it. So, yeah. so my thing is this is probably if somebody has 10 years and come for a billion dollars, something like that can be invested to see whether it's doable. But I don't think you can do something like that as a startup and expect to have a working production solution. Uh, they already built some application like uh, generating electricity by plant and generating lights also, like this bulb, right? They exist in things, they already built, right? What we have to do, design a device, devices like sensor. What we have to divide that electricity change. We have to measure that electricity change. Uh, I'll give you some tips. Right? If we connect two plants by uh, copper cable, there's a very big difference between generating electricity and predictability. Yeah. So I think the key thing is you uh, have to address something like that in st small stages. So first of all, I think if you can do an experiment and yeah. show that are doable, what's the correlation? And I think this is something I would see a university might be doing, but I don't think any startup without that data, without that evidence, that you will be doing that. Thank you very much, uh, audience, for your excellent questions and feedback. Some really great feedback for our team. With that, I'd like to thank uh, Team Elbrings and uh, our next team up. Team Lauren Hipson with their new product, Ulex. Welcome to Team Lauren Hipson. Ready, set, pitch. Definitely. We all love Ulex. It's a part and parcel of our lives. But Ulex is the best. They are a big hit. Hi, I'm Shanaan from Lauren Hipson. Out of the 5.2 million Ulex subscribers in Sri Lanka, 156,000 with an average bill of over 10,000 rupees a month. This may be because of an injection consumption of one quality device, or maybe because they don't know how much each device costed them in the middle of the month. What if you knew how much your fan costed you today? Our solution is a smart adapter and a web portal which will give you real time data of your electricity consumption. Our target market is the high end individuals, Sri Lanka, and medium scale businesses who we'll also face the problem of high electricity consumption. So, our, our solution, research has proven that, that by visualizing the usage, it will help them write down consumption. Our main competitors are the technical systems and all other electricity products. However, we believe that our solution is better than them since we will be providing the real real time analytics. And for the consumers, this is safer. We will be providing them with additional consultancy services for personalized advice for their business environment and factors. We are, we truly believe that we can solve the problem since our team is motivated to solve the problem is in effect each and every one of us. Thank you. So, how do you plan instrument uh, location? So, if you go to a house, how do you get the data and what, what are you going to do to get the data? As I told you, it could be, it could be 
develop clients and exceed consumption of videos. So, we are not trying to reinvent the video. Yes sir, you guys already need to call it 85,000. It current tracks the name of the main system, but it does not provide the clients you say. But, use the tech device, we are able to update the data, this is the problem, electrical signature analysis. We can identify the electrical signature of each and every clients, which we can get help in power consumption. So uh, uh, okay. you are going to your your solution better than net metering. Net metering is something that will take power from solar and and, and supplement the house and maybe even the grid. Now analyze your solution is all about analyzing the usage and providing that information. So how can that be better? Can it be metering is not a direct competitor to our product. However, net metering is only efficient if the user really uses the what if, what if they are they install a solar system and they need really a base case at the end of the month? They will be getting huge bill. If, if the if the usage is exceeding, then it will be produced by the system. I have a question. Um, I, um, so I have about 25 different plug points and probably about 25 different devices plugged in. And my frequency of use of these devices are different. For example, the machine machine works at different uh, schedule, the different different works at a different cycle, the other machines at a different cycle, the different cycles, the all of them are different cycles. So how do you, by using one device, going to find out how much each of these individual components is going to consume by the end of the month? Okay, and when it comes to electricity devices, there are two kinds of devices.
if you take a mobile application, the people who are using it need to subscribe with the mobile network. Then uh, for that, they want to charge around 30 rupees per month. From that, we have a share of 70 percent, which means per month from user we get 21 rupees. She took 
She took over an hour to select a particular network provider. For me, it's way more than that. Uh, the problem is global. The problem is the lack of information and the difficulty and time wasted for people to select a telecommunication provider as soon as they arrive. Our solution is a web portal that provides information about the network provider of the destination country, select, register, and purchase a network package even before arrival. Our target audience are travelers, business travelers, tourists, and visitors to international destinations. Um, our revenue streams include commissions by these telecommunication companies, advertisements, and service charge. Then our, our biggest uh, challenge is the roaming service provided by these telecommunication companies. But the advantage is that we are cheaper and more affordable. We are speaking with, uh, we already, we already spoke with Yeta and they asked us to come to their office for more discussions. Thank you very much. If I understand the solution correctly, so um, you're going to be an e-commerce platform for folks to buy a SIM, a web platform that people could buy their SIM before they land in the country. Network package and internet package. Before they uh, land in the country. If I'm not mistaken, certain countries uh, have regulations where you need to provide an ID or a passport. I think in Sri Lanka you need your national ID card, um, UAE needed a visa. Um, how you plan to now platform, our web platform definitely uh, uh, we have to, the portal is going to include those informations you have to register those uh, your passport, scan your passport, upload it and so every information needed by the information company will be uh, submitted at the portal and we'll forward it to the uh, telecommunication provider and uh, from there we we'll get back to the uh, customer. So there is a food starting issue because for the service to be successful, you need to have multiple countries and multiple operators in the system. So as a small startup, how do you plan to get a lot of these people into your portal? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, for example, in Sri Lanka, we have over 1 million visitors <laughs> annually. Uh, that's our first start destination. For Thailand, we have about 26 million visitors annually. So, um, our, our way of reaching our customers are through travel agencies, uh, business corporations, and, and also organizations, travel organizations like ISEC. Sometimes they have 500 uh, visitors to a country and they find people to register sites, you know, to get connected. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Connect. With that, I'd like to welcome Team Baria with their new product, Yasmin Ready, set, pitch. So, hi everyone, I am Bairu from Team Baria. Here to solve a domestic problem which all of you are facing. So, one fine day. It's this most anticipated match. You are watching the last five overs and suddenly your wife's voice breaks in. So, Mother, guess it's over. Go and get a cylinder. That is really frustrating for you. Just imagine the frustration. If you knew how much of gas was in that cylinder, you could have anticipated that moment and could have done something for you, right? That's where we come in with our solution, the revolutionary gas meter. So, why it will help you? You will be able to see how much of gas was in that cylinder. How much of daily usage is, the, is used by you. And of course, you will know what to do when your wife says something like that, right? And here's our market statistics. Unexpected running out of gas. It's a problem for 1 million households. 
We did an online market survey and found out from 100 people that 70% of those participants would like to buy our product. What else? Every time this issue pops up, it's an opportunity cost of 2,000 rupees. And this happens on an average annual basis of six times. So, I hope you can understand. So, but we would like to form an alliance with the gas company and of course bring this product to save you guys. And we would like to evaluate the technical design of this product with their expertise and that's where we need your support. So, you might be wondering what's our competition. Well, interestingly, of course, that is if you really bother to take your gas can and lift it like this to get amount, get the gas amount. And of course, why do we believe in this product? Because we are team body of innovating for humanity. Thank you. Oh, well, we are actually uh, testing, I mean, actually we are researching in the research phase, so we need to check different prototypes. As far as we know in the industry, they use something called a flow rate. I was my gas cylinder. If I have a gas cylinder, what I've done is not there. Yeah, uh, the instance where it actually helps you is uh, now, for example, let's say if, even if you have a spare gas cylinder, some people still forget to fill the other gas cylinder. That issue actually popped up in our survey. Okay. And that is something which we would like to solve. And also you will be, I mean, rather than showing you, it's not basically showing how much gas is in there. You can actually get an idea of how much gas you're using on a daily basis or on a monthly basis. How much do you think something like this would you know, sell in the market? Is that how much you are able to pay for something? Well, actually, we did this market survey with that intention, and they, most of them have said that this would be better come at a thousand to three thousand five hundred rupees. Several strategies to 
retain their consumers, such as loyalty cards, uh, discounts, promotions, they do not address the core area in consumer retention, which we think is consumer satisfaction. Because today's customers are not only interested in the, only the product that have been offered, but all the additional elements of services that they've been receiving. The solution we are providing is Hadlet, a mobile platform where consumers and merchants are brought together. That it consists of gamified tailor-made consumer retention program, consumer behavior analysis tool, location-based shop solution based on ratings. There is a huge market opportunity because 7.2 million of urban people depend on SMEs and 60% of them use smartphones. Our revenue stream will be based on merchant subscriptions and advertisements. Our target customers are small medium enterprises in urban cities and we get them by direct marketing. Our competitors are current loyal programs and conventional customer engagement platforms. So as Team Synaptics, uh, we, are better than, we are better than those people. We provide tangible rewards and uh, personal services to attend consumer satisfaction. So thank you everyone if you have any questions. Can you explain a little bit what is entailed? So you said that gamification. What does it mean? What what as consumer, what did you see? Yeah, actually sir, the current loyalty programs uh, they give you cards. Then the consumers go to shops and they use those cards and they get points. But uh, in the survey that uh, the universities of universities have done, only 50% of uh, consumers are tend to go into loyalty program. So we thought of why they are not using those loyalty programs because they cannot redeem that. I mean, they are not, they, they, they are not supposed to redeem that points. In, in, I mean, like they have to wait some long time to redeem their points, or they cannot redeem their points impulsively. So using a um, gamified mobile platform, they can redeem their points and they can know what the amount of points that they have used or they have gained. So in the gamified version, they have, uh, I mean, just for an example, just think that when you went to a shop and they continuously go into that shop, and since he's a uh, loyal customer, he can be a VIP in that shop. So that's a gamified application in the Our first 10 teams working on their elevator pitches here today. Thank you very much, those of you who are providing um, detailed feedback and rankings for our teams. We are going to be doing the rest of the pitches tournament style. So, however many teams you've evaluated so far, as soon as you've finished, if you could please pass your scoring here to the center of the aisle. We will be taking a couple of minutes to finish the score. During that time, we'd like everyone to stay in their seats. And as we excitedly wait for the results to come out, I would like to open it up to our audience for any questions you all might have on the GSL program and what has changed this year, what we might be expecting coming in the next six months. So for those of you who are new here with us for the first time, um, I'll go ahead and share the structure of our program. Uh, that's the thing we are most excited about. GSL is a global program that has been operating in over 13 countries. Since the year 2000, our first country was Kenya. And since then, it's expanded outward from Africa to several countries internationally. And we've been here in Sri Lanka for the past four years. Now, the program in Sri Lanka is really revolutionary in terms of what GSL has done in the past. So in each country we looked at previously, every country we've worked in, it's always been a four to eight week program exclusively at a single university focused only around IT, that is web and mobile solutions. For the first time, 
and in large part because of the incredibly cohesive community here in Sri Lanka, we have expanded it to a national program with five universities officially participating and participants from multiple universities, um, including some recent graduates. We even have one PhD assistant here with us. We've expanded it so that it's run a year long with our first batch to last seven months. We are now done with the January phase, and so we are expecting another six months to go. During our upcoming phase, phase two, teams will be working independently alongside their mentors and any other supporters they reach out to to give them feedback and advice on how to proceed. Our incredible program partners, LASCOM, has planned a variety of ongoing professional development opportunities for them, including further information on project management, finance, how to manage your business, how to further assess your target market, develop your features, and following the beginning of phase two, about halfway through, our teams will actually be building their products. We're looking forward to what used to be our full program, phase three, starting in June, culminating in our company's actual launch. By that time, teams will have their first customers. Some of them may already have investments. They'll have their products completely built and ready to use. And when they launch, they'll be ready to hit the market at the end of this coming July. So with that background, I'd like to open it up for any questions. We had a great question. How many successful companies have come out of the program in previous years? Now, I'll start internationally. We don't have tax on the total number of success stories internationally, but the first success story, AITI, used to be called AITI, now Global Startup has ever had, launched in 2001 in Kenya, and they're called Hickey Limited, and they are now Kenya's largest single app development company. And Sri Lanka alone, um, we've had three programs completed so far. Now, in tracking our success stories, it's a little bit difficult for us to determine so far because up till now, most of our students have been mid-year university students, typically second or third year, and the vast majority haven't graduated yet. However, um, in keeping in contact with the previous program participants, many of them have continued, little by little, their companies over the years, and we're starting to see some successes just from the 2011 batch alone. We have four access solutions, um, which has developed uh, a variety of applications, uh, namely drawing this one for the uh, Apple iPad market, and has hit top rank right there. Um, they're continuing their development and expanding out. They currently have about 10 employees. Um, we also, this is probably our greatest success story, we have Basha Limited, um, who, uh, Harsha Kurzin, has uh, been an incredible mentor to not just during the program, but over the years. And they've developed a variety of language translation softwares. Um, additionally, we have actually with us here today, Michonne Silva, uh, representing um, his company, um, which does enterprise software uh, for a variety of different purposes. Um, if you guys would like more information on what he does, I would uh, highly recommend uh, he's calculated down this now, um, but please feel free to connect with anyone in your networking session. So while you guys are thinking about anything else you might like to hear, um, during our next round, we will be selecting the top three teams based on your advice and feedback. They'll be presenting for an additional two minutes focusing primarily on their business and revenue models. We encourage you, following each presentation, we'll have a round of Q&A just as before, uh, to ask further questions on their next steps on revenue models and how they are going to make it to market over the next six months. Thank you very much, Dr. So, uh, the incredible uh, question from Lassa, who's been a mentor uh, for the past couple of years now. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, following uh, first question um, I'll answer is regarding the rest of today's structure. 
So as soon as we have the rest of our results calculated um, and have selected our winner from our elevator pitch competition, uh, we will be grading four professionals and drinks um, for approximately half hour and then do our kickoff with a couple of guest speakers uh, for our second session. Now during our second session, what you heard was only just the beginning of what GSL teams have accomplished. Uh, following at approximately 6 o'clock, we will be having our five teams who thus far have developed their ideas the most thoroughly, have very clear um, ongoing plans, revenue models. Many of them have already conducted customer surveys and they've already developed pitch decks um, here to share their businesses with you today. So we're really excited for the next session. Um, following that, we will be having our upcoming networking session, and we would invite you to stay with us during that time to meet some of the teams. Um, if you're interested in being a mentor and making it to our mentor matching event, um, this will be a really great chance to meet some of the teams who are here who may or may not have uh, been paired uh, with a or multiple mentors. Uh, See so if you start to work with each other. We would love to uh, to have you join us as one of the program members going forward. Um, in response to the other question about the day to day, the first two and a half weeks we've had so far have really been jam packed. Um, we had an industry kickoff, first led by our sponsor Brandix, uh, starting this just this past Thursday, the first week of January and then opened it up to an industry panel thereafter. Um, so a lot of industries ordered thus far on a mentoring day. Um, multiple, those of you who have been uh, and are on our mailing list already, uh, know you probably received uh, quite a few invitations to uh, attend to our events so far. We realize not all of you can make it, but we have had a very, very intense two and a half weeks. Um, after this, we'll be slowing down a little bit. Um, as teams will be working mostly independently, uh, they will currently only be meeting on uh, sessions, short sessions, guest speakers plan on Saturdays for them to gain additional information as pertinent to their teams, as well as meet with PMO uh, regarding their ongoing progress every couple of weeks. And so we would invite you to keep in touch with us and uh, maybe actually reaching out to you for particular events going forward, but it's going to be much more lucky. Uh, our second batch is going to come in during the summer. So we have one group so far, already 65 entrepreneurs going through the first phase of our GSL program this year. Now, here's where it gets exciting. We have not just 65, but we're starting another batch this summer. And this is all thanks to our sponsor, Mandix, represented here today by Siren, um, who following um, the term of like following the, uh, the finishing of our initial funding has really made it all level and enabled us to start a national program here in Sri Lanka, the first program that GSL has ever had to to a national level. And so for that, we really thank them, um, as well as for their ongoing support of entrepreneurship here in Sri Lanka. Um, our second batch will be beginning this coming July. Moving forward throughout phase two of the following fall, and then they'll have their culminating event the following winter. So we're quite excited about those. Did I answer your question properly? I think we may be starting the season. Clear winners and merging. We have some exciting news. We will be having an open bar starting in our second session. Um, I would like to invite you to join us for that as well. Hi, everybody. Um, some of you, this is quite loud, but it looks like some of you, I know most of you, but just to give a short introduction, my name is Akshita Khan, and alongside Amber, and one of the instructors for GSL here at Sri Lanka. Um, you know, I just wanted to add a little bit of a note, and I hope that, I wish there was somebody over there that could just read my volume, because usually I have a very loud voice in general. 
But I, I just want to say, you know, I think we often forget how hard it is to come up on stage. Um, and these students have really shown that effort and shown that encouragement that we've given them and that dedication to come here on stage and really show you all of that, all of, um, you know, their ideas and their team and that excitement. Um, we saw that in the past three weeks and I hope that as you continue to speak to them in the multiple networking sessions that you see that as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I do want to take the time because it is really quite hard to do that and acknowledge that. And uh, before I announce the next three presenters, I would like to give a round of applause to those ten teams. So for the next part, I will be introducing the next three teams that will give you the opportunity to ask more questions about their business model, how they plan to get on their first customer. The next team that we'll be presenting are Utilette Team Laura Lipson. Round of applause, please. <laughs> the Boarding Hostel Finder by Team Caleb. <laughs> and third, Gas Meter by Team Ben. <laughs> presentation and another three minutes of ask, asking Q&A. I'd like to invite the first team up, you'd like Lauren Wilson.
actually this is a this is done by the way
actually we have thought of a very simple mechanism and actually uh, what happened was uh, when we distributed this survey, uh, one guy actually who I know, uh, he said that there was a very simple way to give this and he would also give that support. Uh, so that's why we are confident about this product. Describe it to flow right? Not exactly. Yeah, just define design. Sure. What's what do you uh, what do you bank on? Flow meter measures flow. Yeah. It doesn't measure what's in the in the cylinder. Yeah, yeah, but if you take a flow meter, you get the flow meter. We can actually change the uh, mechanism in that to actually calculate and show the uh, amount of gas that is left. No, you can't. Like we can electronically modify it. But, but, but Yeah. Oh, well, it's a simple mechanism. I think you also can get it. Yes, it. That's something using gas stations also. Yes, distribution now. Yeah. That's No still. Excellent advice as you back to the audience. Thank you, Claudia. So, we do want to select for you guys a final winner without further delay. And so, with that, uh, we will be collecting the score sheets, but we're going to do something a little bit differently for the selection of the final name team. On the back of whichever score sheet you are currently holding, I would like you now to please, yep, just turn it around to the back side, turn it around to the blank side. On that sheet, please write the name of your top choice team or idea. We have Circle It with Boarding Hostel Finder, Buddy Up with Gas Meter, and our last team, Utilect by Laura Ipsum. Alright, thank you everybody. The, uh, the winner of the last three is Utilect by Laura Ipsum. Let's give a round of applause. Um, and, you know, this is, like I said, it's very hard work to come up here. We had some students stay at our place till uh, midnight. And uh, so it's exciting to see the students go from, you know, the first part three weeks ago and from now. And uh, I think that everyone has worked hard, and I think that all the judges, you guys have taken the time to also evaluate and um, provide your feedback. So I think that we all deserve a small break. So it's 6 o'clock right now. Um, let's connect at 615. Let's take some time to actually have some refreshments which is the last one in the back. So I'd like everybody to stand up and uh, if you want, meet with the teams, meet with your colleagues, and learn about more of those ideas. Thank you so much. So as many of you know, I think this is my first time to Sri Lanka. Um, well, I came here about three weeks ago and uh, my involvement started with GSL just maybe a week before that. And during this time, I feel that I really got to know the students, the program, and the industry. And uh, given that, I was actually flying out at uh, midnight. But having said that, there is one thing that I wanted to leave everyone with. Um, and, and that's really around entrepreneurship. It's the fact that entrepreneurship is an extremely powerful tool. And this is for the students, as well as the supporters of the room, um, to make sure to always encourage our program and also encourage the students that are here and, and their ideas. Um, not only is entrepreneurship have the ability to, you know, lay a foundation, build a structure, but it also has this amazing ability to reset their future. Um, and that's something that I definitely want everyone to just reflect on and sink in that it really is an extremely, extremely powerful tool. When MIT started this program about 10 years ago, and I know I've never touched on this a little bit, um, they started this program 10 years ago, and it was first in Africa, as she was mentioned. And when they first went there, they were coding, and when they were coding, on, even on some, some of the students were coding on laptops. And when they were coding, the, the, the languages were obsolete um, at that time. And if you fast forward 10 years from now, that same place where we started, Kenya, is now basically a hub for social enterprises around the world. Fast forward 10 years again, we have gone to 14 countries, um, and we have committed to three to five years in each country. And, and, and with the support of MIT GSL, we are here today, 
and Sri Lanka. He came here about four years ago. We first came with the partnership with Mortura, and Adam Amber also mentioned that partnership that first initially started with one school expanded to nine schools. It doubled the size of the program. Um, we had 350 applicants, and from that, we selected the, the brightest, and uh, we hope that the brightest will continue to phase three into the incubator phase and launch their ideas with concrete customers in the summer um, piece. Now, Sri Lanka is, it's amazing, and then I come from an outside perspective, but I can want to touch on that a little bit, because it's unparalleled to anywhere um, that I've seen with regards to entrepreneurship, but also with regards to the involvement amongst everyone here. The partnership that is married with the program, with the industry, is absolutely unparalleled. You will not, from my experience, and I know you look young, don't be deceived, um, they, that is unparalleled to anywhere I've seen and, and visited, um, especially around entrepreneurship, but also the ability to support the students that are here. You know, I'm a part of the 2014 teaching staff for our GSL, as I mentioned, alongside my co um, Amber. And one of the things that I have realized is that as I you know, fly out today, it would be very, very sad to me. Many of the students know that already. But I'm extremely proud of all of you. I'm extremely proud, and, and I think that this room has many, many sprouting entrepreneurs. And this is the time to take advantage of that. This is the time to think about what this opportunity. Um, I had one student come to us and said, uh, to the teaching staff, and he said, you know, maybe you know, maybe some of the students know about this, maybe some of you guys don't. But one of the things, one of the uh, students said, you know, I came to this program and I think it was going to go about my best thing. But I realized it was an opportunity. And that is absolutely correct. This is an opportunity. This is not a class. This is not um, something that you will forget. Some of you guys said I would never forget you, whether it was together or not. And I am extremely humble when you say that. And, uh, and I will never forget any of you. And I hope you really treat this fully as an opportunity. And realize the support of the industry in this room. Because even though I've only come three weeks ago, I feel that immensely. So I do want to take the time to thank all of you, the students, and our supporters and our mentors for being here today. And I want to give a special thanks to um, Brandis and Staskom for supporting us, as well as I want to do an introduction for our, from the MIT side for um, Professor Sama, who initially started and is the reason why GSL MIT, MIT GSL, is here today. And I will uh, let him touch on his background. So, we arrived here four years ago, and it almost seems like ages, and uh, I want to thank some of you who were there then, and supporting the students, and giving the students uh, all the help that they need, and we have a few people uh, doing that, I think that's really a big help to the success of this program. The interesting thing is, when we look at four year, uh, those four years, we came up with a bunch of expectations. One expectation is we are going to teach this group of the cream of the crop of Sri Lanka to be entrepreneurs. And I think in that expectation we are successful. If you look at some of these people who are now graduating from the universities, they are starting companies, they once they got bitten by the entrepreneurship path, it's hard to go. They are going to do that. So if you go back probably 10 years down the line and look at the top entrepreneurs of Sri Lanka, I think a large part of them will come from a class of uh, 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 this program. On the other hand, I am a pretty impatient guy. I don't want to wait a One thing I want is to have a successful company coming out of this program. And we have achieved that. And now, with the collaboration with Bradley's and Slashcom and Expandix program, I think we are getting to the point that our Success rate is probably made by over 10 minutes. So I am hoping that one of you guys is going to come out of the uh, end of this program with a company that will be known. So the reason I am saying this is actually this is real, this happened. These are not just uh, 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 
part of that and they end up being a very good technical solution. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, do that, I, I don't know, they have got, uh, uh, they have uh, in uh, Silicon Valley. Beautiful office, they all have a farm, they have nice and students. On top of that, there are thousands of people working for them in Pakistan and India. And there's a very interesting picture, uh, why I showed you this picture, of this bunch of Pakistanis having pizza. So, what's this going on? So, these people work in a rural town. And they have been getting this many of pizzas. And they were like, how they have a pizza? And so, at some point, they just grow small and 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 have a pizza. You see, what is Americans are all crazy about pizza, but they have never heard of it. I bought this motorbike uh, uh, from because I was in the US and, and thank you for giving me a job. Someone said I was going to get married because I was going to get married. So, so at this point there are 9,000 plus people. And there's about 9,000 plus people. We have amazing technical solution. As users we are uh, 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 using this. A lot of people are using their data. And there are 9,000 plus people. And then, two months ago, uh, they saw the company. So, uh, uh, they had uh, two uh, uh, founders, they raised 10 million dollars in venture capital funding, sorry, 3 million dollars in venture capital funding, and their company was sold to 70 million dollars. So, for somebody, somebody in mid 20s, it's not a bad chunk chain to have a company they own, it's sold by 70 million dollars. So, now I have been telling Marek that every time I go there, he has to buy my dinner. Because it used to be when I go visit San Francisco, I used to buy his dinner. Because he was my student, but no, not anymore. Because he has a lot more cash in his pocket than I have. Uh, uh, so this is a true story, and this happened to my wife's student. And, and just by taking a class, I and mean, if you think this is a class, I'm thinking again. I'm in the end of it. This is like, for example, something like Sakhar. Uh, when he was in town, I don't think anybody said, okay, yeah, he's going to be uh, uh, in the top part of the industry. And he is, because he just kind of it. I think it's amazing potential in this because a lot of these ventures that we can do today are intellectual ventures. They are not something you need millions of dollars of investment. It's not trying to get the oil refined. Do something like that that is all governed by money or who has access to money. The current ventures we are talking about is who has access to very This is that is the most valuable guys And the key thing is to think through that process and basically try to harness that and think like an entrepreneur. That is the hard part. I think a lot of you guys have the technical ability. When you go to AIPI, when you make a lot of other countries, our hard part is to get them the technical knowledge to do this uh, apps. You see like a transformation. Most people have the technical ability. But think like an entrepreneur. Think like, why do someone want to buy something? Why, would, why do you want to buy something? And at some point, you might be the customer. Think through that process, and I think you can come up with ideas, and if you put the passion and the time and energy into it, you might become the next market or next customer. And I really want to see at least one or two companies out of this program who do come out in up in that place. I think that can have a big impact for you definitely, but also for Sri Lanka. So, I hope that's going to happen. I want to thank everyone who's here with these uh, uh, students. Uh, uh, I think that. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. So, now I would like to move on to the next uh, part of the presentations. Now, do you want to be able to showcase some of the hard work that the students have done um, over the past few weeks? And some of them with only ideas that are a week or less. And this is not, um, so the, the presentations that will be taking place now, there's five, and this is just to show the most de developed ideas, as well as the diverse industries that they represent. We have many amazing ideas, amazing teams that are going to be evolving and pivoting throughout the next phase. Um, so I'd like to start off with the first team, Car Talk by AT. We are 18 and we are here to present our idea which is 
this part up. So, okay. So, I know most of you in this room right now will, will probably have cars, you can drive cars. So, so, but tell me, how much do you actually know about your car? Like, how much detail do you have real access to? <laughs> now, back in the 90s, at least before the year 2000, a lot of the cars that came out were mostly mechanics. There was very little interaction between the car and its users. People, they didn't know anything about what was going on in the car. And, well, this was like, if, if, if someone wanted to repair their car, they'd have to be a mechanic, virtually. So, after the year 2000, this changed a little bit. Um, more technical stuff became included in cars, and more gadgets and the and all that. But still, people had very limited access to most of the details of their car. And uh, most uh, the key details that the more important details were left out, and they didn't have real access to them. More importantly, they didn't know how to access them. But in the, in the recent years, in the past recent years, gradually the amount of gadgets they have increased, and you know there are indicator lights where you can, you know, light would come on and you know that something was wrong with your car. But the problem is with the analytics because you couldn't analyze what was happening. You couldn't go into detail about what was really wrong with your car. You just knew there was something wrong, but you didn't know what to do. So that can be a huge problem. Why? Well, I just say, um, because of this technicality, you don't get to know much about your car. And you know, just imagine a situation where you're going somewhere and down the road your car just happens to break down. And, well, most of the time you wouldn't know what the, what the fault was, you don't know what to do with it, and in the end you just end up calling a mechanic and you just go take it to the garage and something like that. So that can be a huge hassle. But if you knew beforehand, if you knew what was wrong with your car, if you knew that there was a fault in your car, and you knew what to do with it, then you could have avoided that altogether. And another, uh, another situation is where uh, you go to a service station, and the guy there goes like, you, you tell him that there's something wrong with your car, and then he says, okay, there's something wrong, but then he ends up repairing more of your car than you actually intended. So that's totally ripping you off, that's totally ripping you off. And it's the same thing when you go to places like uh, car sales, where someone sells you the car, but in the end you discover this is not what you want. So that's a huge problem. So there are problems like that where if you had just known something more about your car, if you had access to more details about your car, then you could have been more involved. So, um, what was wrong? So, what's the solution? Our solution is car talk. It's basically a method where you can get data from your car, get a new you can access data and data from your car, and you can process it in such a way that it becomes useful to anyone. Anyone can read it, they can understand it, and that's what we're trying to do here. So it's, made, it's basically a mobile application. Uh, you plug in a device into your car, it's called, um, it's actually a, a small module, and it's plugged into the OBD port of your car. Uh, for those of you who don't know, OBD means onboard diagnostics. It's a small part in your car where you can plug it, plug the device in. And through that, you can get the data from your car, but this data is, well, it's just raw data. What we're doing is we're building an app where you can convert that data into meaningful information that anybody, practically anybody, can understand. So, some, some features of this. Well, um, it gives us pop-up solutions for faults. So, if there's something wrong with your car, um, it gives us solutions to what we can do about it, what we can do about it, stuff like that. So it's basically like if it indicates there's a fault, you, you, you know what the fault is, you know how to uh, overcome it, and you know where to go. And another thing is we thought of maintaining car and driver profiles. Now how we're doing this is we're linking with garages and insurance companies that helps us to keep profiles for uh, cars and drivers. So by this we can promote more eco-friendly and safe driving. So that's also a kind of feature. And also uh, about portability, well, when you're doing analytics in your car, uh, mostly what you do is if you want to know something about it, you go to the garage or somewhere. But with this, we can actually do it on the go. You just get the data through the port into your mobile app, and then you get to know everything you need to know about your car. And onto the customers, well, mainly we're focusing on just regular users, people who you know, 
know, for the car or you know, everyday users. So that's our main customer. And apart from that, we also are considering service stations where this sort of thing can come in handy, knowing about the cars. And also, there are car evaluators, people who evaluate your car and tell you, you know, how much it's worth. For them, this, this sort of system is really crucial. And also, another potential customer is insurance companies, and also fleet managers, you know, fleet management systems. So that's about the customers. So that's it. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask. This is a very interesting idea, and I think there might be a local context too, because in US, there was a lawsuit a few years ago of a company trying to do the same thing because these devices that we call this information is sold by manufacturers, and they charge a huge premium. And so a couple of them do this, I think got sued and, and they, I think they lost the lawsuit. So in some sense, do it in Sri Lanka, you might be able to get around that problem and, and, and perhaps do it for uh, uh, developing countries achieve solutions. Uh, just a very quick comment. Uh, two, two things really. Uh, the port you're, you're talking about is the OBD2 port first came into being for emission control, basically so that people can just plug a meeting and say your oh, two sensors are working on right? Um, so the, in, there is a wealth of information accessible through that, but mostly uh, car manufacturers are blocking it through a gateway control. So you have no access to the proprietary buses inside the most bus, and there are so many other buses. So while it's true that you have a, a good subset of data there, whether it's whether you can service all those requirements from that data is again something you think about. Secondly, uh, if you want to deal with all, all the things like service stations and buying that data to offer, you could, but then you have a strong relationship with the company that you have. And I agree that the competing products in this space.
But hey, that's the way it is around here. You accepted it as it was, and you bought all the clothes you wanted, and you went back home. Who are we to change how it is around here? That's where we got it wrong. We have to challenge the status quo. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Team Kiwalfa presenting Shopping, a product in the fashion retail industry. So to understand about the industry, we did a quantitative research on, uh, on people around Sri Lanka, exactly 150 applicants, and this is what we found out as the problems that they are facing. The salespeople are basically incompetent. They, they are either very unhealthy, moody, basically really bad. And it's really hard to find new items when you go into a fashion store. And the size has a problem. You spend 30 minutes trying to find a perfect shirt, and then you realize your size is not available. And it's time consuming and inconvenient. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just one side of the coin. Flip it over and you'll see the other side. From the side of the fashion retailers. We did a qualitative research and we met three fashion retailers, namely Odeo, Fashion Park and Cool Planet, and we talked to them and tried to understand the problems that they are facing. And this is what we found out. They can't provide a personalized service or personalized experience for their consumers. The salespersons are not delivering the best experience that they can give to their customers. And on top of that, they don't know about their customers and the online platforms that they have are not performing optimally. So, there are problems in both the sides. And we need to give a solution. So what do we propose? This is how we want to bridge the gap. The gap between the expectations of the consumers and what the fashion retailers can deliver. As the first part is a shopping comparative mobile app for consumers. When they start adapting, we'll get information about the consumers and we can provide custom analytics for fashion retailers. Using those analytics, they can optimize their operations and improve the customer experience. So iteratively, the, the gap will be bridged. If we talk about the specifics, let me introduce to you Shopping. There are four key features that we want to introduce to you based on what the market has requested. Namely, sizes. 85% of the market want to know whether a size is available in a certain store related to a certain product. Discovery. 65% of the consumers want to be able to discover new items as they walk into a store. 55% of people out there want to find out more product information, more than what a salesperson can give. And 51% of the consumers want better customer service. So using shopping, there are certain things that fashion retailers get. They can empower their sales personnel by giving this app and providing a better customer experience. They can improve the customer relationship management and have a personalized experience for each customer and then provide location-based customer behavior analytics and finally enhance the customer experience of fashion retail customers in Sri Lanka. Of course, it's all thought if we don't have a prototype to show you. So here we go, this is our prototype. So we call it shopping. When you walk into a store, you see shopping mobile app. You can download it fast on any Windows or Android or, or iOS platform. You get it and you uh, register for it and voila. You start getting information. You get personalized uh, information and, and uh, if you're a first time user, it will give you certain recommendations. If you use it multiple times, it will give you a very personalized information based on your past purchases. So you'll see things that you might like. Uh, you can be notified when you're close by and, and you can basically go around. When you're going around, if, if, you, if you're interested in a certain product and when you walk by it, you get something like this and you see, hey, this product is right here. You can check it out. There are certain related products as well. And you can check the sizes and the product information. And most of all, if you can't find the sales assistant around, you can press this button and get the sales assistant to come right there. You can move around and if you don't want notifications, you can still use the barcode scanner because all the clothing apparels have a barcode on it. Just scan the barcode and you still get all the information you want about that product. You can also, it's very hard to navigate around the store. So you can use this app and find out where exactly you want to go, where exactly you are. And your customer experience will be satisfied.
satisfactory. So, in terms of the implementation, in terms of the implementation, we will develop the abstraction layer during the first phase, and we will go by that and get back to the second phase and develop the connection layer during the final phase. In terms of the team, I'm Praveen, I come from, uh, I've completed CIM, so I have a marketing background. We are all computer science undergraduates. This is Pranavan, he is a double degree holder. Uh, this is Rumesh, he is also a Microsoft Student Ambassador. And this is Rajita, he is also an Oracle Certified Programmer. So that is our product, ladies and gentlemen. We are open for questions and answers. Alright, sir. So there are two uh, products that we have uh, planned. So in terms of technical details, one is a solution using barcodes, while the other one is using SD modes. So in terms of SD modes, uh, you use the Bluetooth low energy uh, as well as SD modes. So you have, you are connected to a Wi-Fi, and using that you can track wherever you are in the store. Given that the store knows where the inventory is based within the store, would you just not use that? Sorry, I need to question. A particular t-shirt would be in a particular hanger in a particular place. Wouldn't you just use that for location? Because all this is expensive, right? Agreed, agreed. So, so but just something. You, you could use the, the place where the products are. Yes. Even the virtual sphere. Yes. Okay. So essentially, when you're walking around trying to discover, and there might be interesting new things that you're interested in. So, if you choose some of those things and you walk by it, you might have missed it, you'll get a notification saying, hey, you just passed it, you might be interested in this item. You can go close by, pick it, and try it on if you're interested, you can go and buy it. So, we are trying tracking of the people. Essentially, yes. So, how we are hoping to make money is basically uh, on a monthly subscription based model from fashion retailers. So, for every fashion retail store, we are hoping to charge a certain amount based on the size. If they are going for the high end solution, then Obviously, I have to use a lot of estimates, which are, as you mentioned, sometimes are pretty expensive. So, it depends on the solution that we are providing, but essentially, it's a monthly subscription based model for each fashion retail store. It's, it's a free app for the consumers. Uh, thank you so much. Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here as a promise representing the travel of First of all, I have a question for you all. Have you ever missed your bus and become extremely frustrated? Is there anyone? Ah, fortunately, I don't have this. Okay, I'm going to share one of my experience. I was uh, at Stats by last, uh, last Friday and we are having a discussion. And it ends up by 7 p.m. and I was leaving planning to leave home by 9. So I went to Elamanta by 8 o'clock and there were three buses which is leaving for 8.30 and 8.45 and 9 o'clock actively. And I asked for a ticket and asked for a seat. What I got was all the buses are booked. I have 26 for in order to reserve for myself. The problems are, what I have to do was, I have to be there at least one more before 5 o'clock on each day in order to get a ticket. And I have to be there in person, I have to make all my transactions, payments, everything done. Then only I will be assured to get a ticket. Otherwise, I'm not. That's how it works right at the moment in Sri Lanka, in other countries as well. So, these are the problems that I identified. So, the, my solution is a convenient, secure, and remotely accessible online platform in order to reserve your bus tickets. It will be definitely convenient and the transaction medium will be safe and secure. Obviously, you can use your credit card or debit card or if you have an easy cash mobile, easy cash subscription, you can do that. And if you have any postpaid account, postpaid mobile accounts, you can add the bill, likewise. And of course, it will be remotely accessible. See, preferences will be given, like uh, if you want a window site, for example, if you're traveling to Colombo to Badunda, definitely you can a window site because there are so many things that you can you can enjoy during the journey, likewise. And of course, to we'll stick with the paper of ticket. We will be, we will be giving a SMS notification as a ticket. You will go there and you will take your mobile phone, show your connect, hey, this is my ticket. I will send you see. Welcome sir, you are here, have a special journey. That's what it happens. And this is our core functionality and uh, that's how it simply works. 
and the, the market over here. Sri Lanka is having about 21 or 20, approximately 20.3 million of population. Among them, 19.5 million mobile subscribers are available. It clearly implies that among us, 95% of we are having a mobile account, a mobile subscription. So definitely we could buy transactions and all mobile platforms which we could accommodate in the service. And of course, about 23,000 private buses are available in Sri Lanka. So our exact target target is point to point long distance bus service. If we become if we become something about in, in intensity, not for intensity. For example, if you are traveling for Kalam to Jaffna, okay, we are the guys who are gonna provide the service for you guys. And our target customers. Obviously, for the initial initial stage, our target customers are professional students. And of course, it was because they are the guys who are not ready to waste their valuable time for this. For this, I mean, for these stupid things that I have to stand in the queue and I have to go through them. And uh, of course, uh, as I mentioned, that I have to be on call before 5 o'clock. It's clearly implies that it's a big cover. Is there anyone who is ready to waste of one, or, or one second or at least one minute of your big cover? That's, that, that's not available. Right? So these are the exact target customers and uh, our competitors. Obviously, dialogue and having such a similar service, but it's not working well. Dialog is having one for Kalamu to Akane Pantu and Kalamu is having, I mean, Mohitam is having one for Kalamu But still I'm from the Sri Lanka, eastern part of Sri Lanka, but I'm not ready to use the service because, I mean, it's not convenient. They have some other service and I should really accommodate it that they don't like to get the service. So, obviously, our target competitors is third party bus booking agents. Those are the guys who are running this business right at the moment. They are the guys who is like, scheduling all the buses for the private sector. They are the guys who is issuing the tickets and they are the guys who is I mean, coordinating all the bus ticket and reservation systems. So they are our competitors. And uh, of course I have to tell them, when I say third party bus booking agents, hypothetically they are our competitors but not practically. Because if we deploy this service on the on Sri Lanka at this station, they will become our partners. Because this system, this system has been like that. They will be we will integrate with those guys. They could be able to do their own business, right? Right at the moment, we are doing our own business. So definitely, they will be our practically they will be our partners, but hypothetically they are the companies. So this is our plan of achievement. The first two months we will be uh, going with the domain application, and second two months we will be building the system, and the third month, the third two months we will go to evaluation. When I say evaluation, definitely we need a platform in order to evaluate our service. So, I'm so proud to say that we have a first partner. This is our partner. So, what we are going to do is he's is he's seeking for he's seeking for such a service. He's seeking for such a service, and we are the guy who is ready to provide such a service. So, we have collected and we have negotiated some things with him. And uh, by the end of six months, we will be providing our service with this guy. Practically, we will, go, we will be going through what are the problems and what are the solutions we could consider in this case. And by the end of six months, definitely we will be having a success story that Sri Lanka has the online ticket reservation system. And of course, at the end of seven months, you all will be ready in order to reserve your ticket with our service. Definitely. And uh, this is my team and I'm Shafni. I'm from the University of Morocco. And these are my colleagues, Mr. Chando and Mr. Insha. And, uh, Thank you and uh, thank for questions. Uh, it, uh, it's all about the commissions. That, uh, for example, we have. Yeah, I will show you. This is about it. If the ticket is less than 200, you'll be charging about 30 rupees plus tax. If it's 200 to 500, 40 rupees. But that one is wrong. If it's more than 500, 10% of the ticket charge plus tax. We have done some market analysis as well. So, that does not sound like a market, but I'm going to bring up the question that I brought up earlier. Um, I'd like to see how much more thought you give it. So, I think personally, I can appreciate um, the problem. I've gone through it, and I think there are a lot of folks that will be able to solve that problem. Um, you said big companies like Dialog and Movie have 10 minutes, uh, but you claim they're not successful. Right? There's, there's, there has to be a reason why that's not successful. And what I haven't seen is um, the feasibility of putting this in place. We are talking about uh, a large base of fragments that survive, uh, getting them to be organized and follow uh, Have you 
given thought to analyze monitors and dialogue system and tell me why that broken, that breaks down or should we give it some thought on how we all will be even more successful? As far as I know that, uh, I mean, uh, dialogue hub, as I have already mentioned, dialogue has only one route, which is for Kalamu to Vector Repertu, and uh, monitor has one for Kalamu to Kalamu. And uh, for us, I don't, I don't know what that exactly is. But the biggest challenge is maybe the guys who is, uh, I mean, the biggest challenge in the admin industry is the guys who is uh, working as a contractor and uh, bus drivers and the guy who is reserving all the tickets, keeping them on board. That's the biggest challenge that we have right at the moment. But I should tell another success story that in Sri Lanka, they have read, they, in, in India, they have figured out this problem and they have found a solution. And of course, there are about more than three companies doing such a service. So I can't be. India is with Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka country like India. They are having about, you know, as I, I went through the, one of the service that it is red bus for IEM, they have some service for, I mean, Chennai to Hyderabad. Very long distance, very, I mean, I, I don't know what exactly, the, I mean, what the service, but it's a very complex thing, but they are providing the service, so why not be? Always you are talking about the whole thing, it's a problem, definitely we should need a service, in fact, definitely we should go for you. Why? Why can't myself as the first speaker? Yeah. So 
we as a team went to, to the house to find out double down my shingle, who has a mind to stitch here. And our team keep on asking the problem face by car. She has a problem with P and D. She can't pronounce the word anywhere. She often pronounces anywhere. She has done her whole level. She passed all of the subjects. Numbers. And she sometimes struggles to keep the things tidy. With the most sad part is she is very hesitant to say she has a special. And going to the problems, we keep on asking, what do you do if you have this problem? And she said she went to the therapist and counselor. And we keep on asking, what therapy is it to you? The therapy, therapy is doing some labor training sessions to the charts, speech therapy, or words paper based on her games, the counselor keep calling her from her uh, office and try to boost her experience. This is what we learn on your space for this children. So we are now team concern to what we can do for those children, for those uh, dyslexic individuals. Then our team went to the to meet Dr. Mahesh Vijayvarman, Vijayvarman from the hospital. Neurologist, both neurologists, good and good. And the first question we asked her, that the passionate what we hear is that she introduces, can technology enhance the treatment? And she said, yes, technology can enhance the treatment of my dyslexia. And we went to the neurologist, we made a contact with Mr. Udena, all the way from Port Australia. I personally met him, and we got a feedback that yes, this is an interesting project. He had a long experience dealing with dyslexia and is very happy to help us. So our team is going through all the problems faced by dyslexia, solutions that are existing. So, some what areas? There are problems, there are solutions. Based on solutions, what are the areas you can abstract as a technology can enhance? Talk to the doctor, you know this as he said. The technology can enhance the mind dyslexia. And on the top of that, Our solution to cure my dyslexia is through the desktop and tablet applications. We want to implement those therapy sessions and skills, and the most important, the value we can create to the applications with privacy. The one we talk to the number of is is very hesitant to say she has dyslexia. This is the key value we can give on these applications. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have gone to the field research. We are, we are doing personally deal with real dyslexic individuals. So, before leaving, before leaving from there, I will ask you a very gentle question. Won't you help us to treat the dyslexic children and human beings, which has the capacities to become a leader, but which has the capacity to be a scientist and organized man? Won't you join in hands with us? Thank you. based on the problems faced by the dyslexia. Then we come to solve it. Can see that we have solutions where the technology can solve. There are a lot of solutions where technology can be Like She has a problem with keeping the things tidy. She has a problem with keeping the things tidy. Here, what technology can solve? These are the solutions where our technology can solve. Look here. I didn't try let's try again. It means we don't want to disgrace the world with this application. This is a very key point. Because the dyslexics, they have good conferences there. We all know this, knowing we're talking to the doctors, dealing with the dyslexic individuals, and if we press the correct answer. It's the encouragement for them to what I tell you. The only is where they yeah, these are things we are implementing in the future. Dyslexic are they have problems with identifying the pictures, images. So we, we are giving the pictures and the solutions here, right? When we stop, we are clicking, we are implementing the future and we are getting this product. But those for that dyslexic are giving are uh, getting the feedback. But if it really works, we are going for the next dyslexic. This is how we work.
probably even more in near future. So it is universal. No matter you are carrying iPhone or you are born in Windows, probably you are iPad or you are laptop and two from whatever device. It can be easy, plugable and charge with our universal solution. And then what happens? So actually, let me introduce this is another moment. Because can something electricity with the virus? If it is a virus solution, what happens? Not like that. So I'm waiting for the okay. It's a pretty cool. I'm not involved in anything with that thing because I'm not going to promote my our solution with, along with this. Projector is out. So unfortunately, we have to interrupt our presentation in the middle of it, but never mind. I'll tell the story. So with that thing, we can be able to charge without biolessons. That's my last point in there. So without biolessons, that what means? Do you know that electromagnetic fields? Most people are very fear about it. Oh, this thing gonna make a cancer so, on my head. What a business. But we can guarantee that our uh, YHR solution has no free biohazard because of our technology. We simply charge your device without harming you. It's a promise. And then, uh, why charge you there? I think it's a solution for global charging systems. And, and finally, our product will be everywhere like you can obtain wireless electricity anywhere you travel, like Uber Lab, Wi Fi, near available in this place. Or even in this place, near future, you can charge your device. Oh, right, okay. And uh, yeah, you can see that. We can map it in the uh, Pizza Hut, McDonald's, KFC, Coffee Bean, like those places. And people get charged. And then, even your home, your office can. Wireless charging. Also, finally, ultimately, we can integrate that charging receiver with the your mobile devices, laptops, what we said. Completely wireless. You no know, one think about wires. Apple, Sony, Dell, Samsung. These devices came with our ultimate solution like wireless. And finally, let me introduce our team. I am Dr. Telekan, electronic and computer engineering. So, this is Mirai Jasper, who is doing uh, engineering and finance and accounting. And this is uh, Rajita, and he is software engineering and marketing business. So, this is Shamila, and this is software engineer of ours. And then, last class, the two and the who is mechatronic engineer and who is responsible for our operation. So, ladies and gentlemen, now I know you have a very, very question about your needs. Now it's time to ask your questions. We are ready to answer. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, generally, today is state of the art. There are two ways of delivering power wirelessly. One is inductive uh, coupling, and other one is to deliver the sign wave as a radio frequency. Uh, the loaded sign wave, you get very low power, and you have to up and you get high power, that's good standards. What are you using? What, what, what's the methodology that you're using? For that technical question, what my technical guy will answer that question. Yeah, thank you again. Actually, we yeah, are on the way to pay, that's why we put our prototype images in our slides. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so that, that's, that's why we are inspired. Who should be answering to this question? <laughs> and <laughs> very carefully. So, it's like, uh, like this imagine. You know that already existing problems along with the uh, inductive charging as well as that uh, electromagnetic wave. Uh, what will happen? But I'll give you a proof. What we can do something like think about if we can 
give it something for life, for our life. Don't miss it. it but quite similar like that, but not exactly like <laughs> that.
as a big thank you to him. I personally worked with him a lot over the past month, and we're very lucky to have him. Thank you guys, but also hopefully try and get you guys to see why you all learn this, right? To try and paint the big vision. I know there's tons of activities happening, there's so many people doing some amazing hard stuff in the scenes, uh, and, and it's all over the hill. And it is, I think the great thing is it's always starting to build. So I just want to invite you guys uh, to see the way we are seeing it right now, um, get feedback from you, hopefully kind of continue on the live event. Um, so this really is part of the whole House of Tech startup journey. Uh, we kind of tried to engage uh, Francesco. Uh, quick recap of where we are. Sorry. So I'm not going to go into details, but you know, a lot to be proud of as an industry, right? Uh, we've had a 100% growth in workforce from 2007 to 2013, 182% growth in revenue. And you know, with regards to the startups, so the number of companies and this number is an estimate, uh, but we see that we've probably grown you know, from about 171 to 125. Now, this number, we're trying to figure out, Sasuke has about 160 members. We're presuming there's quite a few people out there. But whatever the number is, it's not uh, a lot more to be done, right? Uh, the good news is that there's been a whole series of amazing startups out there, right? Uh, especially around the startup and the social software areas. So, where are we right now and what do we want to do? So, the, the vision statement that we put out, uh, and I guess I'm going to kind of help out, uh, highlights what we'll be asking why 2022. Election mandate as well, so it makes sense for us to be like that. Um, so, three moonshots that SASCOP is trying to work together with the industry and try to achieve, right? Five million dollars in revenue, 200,000 job creation, a thousand tech startups, right? We're calling it the 1KLK program. Now, the key outcomes, and we're trying to architect a uh, 1KLK program, are fundamentally in this, right? I think as we do these programs, uh, we want to make sure that we are we're creating an empowered and abundant mindset. I think we've all worked for so many years. Um, we've discussed it in certain corners, there's sometimes a bit of an entitlement mindset. Uh, no fault of anyone, just the way that we walk kind of grow up in the system. There's a lot of conditioning that we need to work against. So we're trying to make sure that we know, uh, increase the mindset to be more powerful and abundant, make sure that we hold on to these one things that I think really this thing sounds real up, right? We've really heard sacrosanct in the last one is being difficult. Let me inclusive. So I want to make sure that what we're seeing is now spreading across people are more all corners of Sri Lanka. Um, and they like to maybe kind of do something that's accelerated and disruptive. Right? So it's not just a simple if you let it grow, but really try to do something big. So what we're trying to do is and it's also the bigger picture. We approached it from a viewer saying if we can segment this and target this in a way of by maturing Right? I think we'll get a better sense of uh, results. So I think there's a lot of things happening, but what tends to happen is we try to apply the same approach uh, across smart buildings. And you see a bit of that also in this program, uh, which we're trying to cover. But broadly, what we're trying to do is to kind of break it in three areas, right? It's initiate, incubate, and accelerate. So we want to try to figure out a program that help us really catch people young. I think the 15 to 18 age group is really where we start setting the seed of taking risks. Being able to experiment, right? Uh, so we're looking for partners, we're looking for programs to help cut across this whole age group to try and help uh, the mindset and the culture creation. Uh, what we have right now happening is one program of what they call incubate phase, which is about how do we catch kind of the young leaders coming out of universities, just graduate, and really help them to kind of be able to incubate new young companies. Right? Another big space I feel that we have, and I know a lot of people working on this, we'll meet it tomorrow, uh, different conferences. But really, how do we accept that? Right? It's all the companies that are saying under billion dollars delivering right now. How do we get all of them guys and come into a program that helps take companies into billions of dollars plus in the next five years? Right? Uh, so, those are some of the ways that we're looking at breaking this model up. Uh, and the reason I share this is to kind of really get all of us hopefully align this, get your thoughts, your inputs, hopefully partnerships that help kind of create this, just like we have to uh, someone at the MIT to be able to help us all things like that. So now getting into the program itself, I want to describe where we are with uh, the Global Startup Labs. Uh, we feel that the Global Startup Labs is a way that we operate with, with the partnership with Brandix and a lot of them, going and Surya and Brandix as a whole, to be amazing and generous partners. Uh, it literally took five minutes 
from the time when we first spoke to Dana and uh, Suryan for them to say, you got us out, go home. And that's even without knowing how much it's going to cost. Um, so, huge kudos for that. And I think one thing that I've experienced in the last two years is this country has amazing people to support. There's only two things that are required. A company mission and a guarantee that you have a good team that's going to execute. And if those two things can be brought forward, we can move on. And the good news is that we have both of those in front of us. So, coming back to the program, we really will probably need three phases. So phase one, which we're just concluding today, is really primarily about two things that we think are fundamentally important for staff. Getting a high quality, scalable idea, and ensuring that we give enough input so that the team selection can be done in a very mindful and thoughtful manner. We had multiple discussions on this, we told them, be sure about the opportunity cost, anything more than 5 team members all from the same sector, red flag, whatnot, right? So this is hopefully a section that will give you the right idea, the right team. As you saw, a few teams have evolved further in terms of getting the right idea. There's a few teams who are still working through that. And they'll work through that, right? Uh, but hopefully the idea is that we will run this program to help them evolve this idea more refined, more refined right? But those who have actually got the idea it makes sense to go forward, right? Phase two that kicks off and then would be about validating the product. But I'll get into a bit more details about phase two because that's really what we're going into. We need your support in the next few months for that. Uh, phase three, which will start in June and go on to about early August, is about refinement and launch. And that's the point where we'll again have a way to come back with four instructors and help us kind of work through that program. Now, I want to say what we'll start up for the next five years is this is the structure, right? So in a one-year program, we have two batches. We just picked up the first batch, so January to July. Uh, roughly, I think our expectation is that this is so this should be able to support 10 startups. Now, there is no limitation on it. You can get 15 to 20 in a week. But realistically, I think our view is that if we can target it to and we have 10 startups actually getting launched out of the program in a six-month window, that's kind of what we're defining ourselves as success. Right, so we'll see where we are. This program itself is very much in the start of phase one. Uh, we're going to go into a bit more details of phase two and then I'm going to end it up so that we can all go and uh, enjoy some refreshments. Uh, and here's where we really need your support. And I'm looking for input, suggestions, hopefully more partnerships, or just listen to a few that get, you know, that we've uh, had conversations, but I'm sure there's a lot more things that I'm going to be approaching and you guys will hopefully uh, you know, raise your hand and say you'll be willing to be part of this. Uh, essentially, phase two is going to be about create, validate, and and do this as long as you need to in the next few months to get to the point where you have solid idea. So, sorry, you take up your idea to the point where it actually is ready to be launched and be commercialized. Now, in that period, we're going to start layering up project management, legal tax, industry uh, specific and technical support. Uh, you can read through it. Right? So, pretty much every two to three weeks, we are expecting that we will have some kind of uh, involvement where we have a guest lecture or industry family that's supporting all the teams dig through these specific areas. But we also have monthly video check-ins. Uh, one big change that we made from last term to the last time this time is we are expecting a lot more accountability and drive from the teams. And I'll say this up front, as we said earlier, this is not a classroom. This is real life. So for all of you guys who are here, there's a lot of business to be made. A lot of people as you can see have sacrificed on Monday from 3 o'clock. Come in and be a because we all believe in this. We all want to make you successful. But the real test starts now because there is no classroom, there is no achita, there is no ember, there is no one behind you to say whether you're on time, whether you're late, or not. It's up to you. Now we will help you to some extent by having a monthly check in on the PMO. But guys, if you're late for that, if you don't come for that, if it doesn't make sense, we have limited resources in the program that needs to get deployed for the most effectiveness of the program. That's reality of life. That's the way we're going about this. Um, so just want to call a few people. Brandex, obviously, in great support, but also from an industry perspective, uh, is going to get a really big support for us to get understand. And I really think it opens and personalize that the whole Akron industry is, is a virgin industry. I like to call it that way right now. Multiple ways. <laughs> Not only on the sex lottery, but also in terms of opportunity for innovation. And I think there's a lot more. So for all the teams, there's an invitation that I'm telling all of you guys. Here's a reality of life. Sometimes I get pumped, but just because you don't have a good idea that has set it upon you, there is no lack of great ideas. There are so many amazing problems and great things to solve. You just need to start asking for help. Right? So this phase one was about not trying to intervene too much and not trying to impose on it because ultimately it's about passion. 
you cannot run a company if you don't believe it. So we didn't want to make sure that we told them here's a great idea to do this. We just introduced you guys into different industries that proved to be having so many potential ideas. But you are now at a point where this is a decision. We got feedback, we had it about four or five times when I just tell you in and out, is it a go or a no go? Now, I hope all of you will go through, all of us who said it's a no go, off our heads, and I wish you all not to do that. But from this point onwards, if you do not feel that your idea has got traction, you have a choice. You can go back, speak to the network of mentors, you can go to the different industries, latch on to something that has already been identified as a big idea and that makes sense, and reapply on the program only because every six months we're going to be having this program. Right? So it's going to run through the same thing. We're going to help you come with a new idea, we'll help you refine it, take it to the whole process. Right? So I've been very open with you guys um, and, and I encourage all of you to kind of make the most of it. So with that, thanks to all of you. Um, really looking forward to the uh, people here in terms of mentors and industry to give feedback to us on the skinny flow. I know there's a lot more things that we can do and we've learned. Um, but I really appreciate you guys coming all your time and Thanks. During our networking portion of the event, we would give you the opportunity to provide additional feedback and we would additionally love to hear your thoughts on which teams you are most personally excited about. Now we've included just the last five teams, those who presented the PowerPoints. Um, our computers will be set up in the back of the networking area so that at any time, if you decide you talk to that team and you are the most excited about them, uh, you can go ahead and vote and uh, we'll make sure to share the results. So, thank you very much, Akshita. I'm going to turn it over to Akshita. So, thank you, Amber, and thank you, everybody here, for supporting us. Um, I, I personally would like to thank all of you for coming and for all the students for being a part of the program. Um, you guys have all touched me very, <laughs> very touched by all of you guys, and um, I hope you all stay in touch um, with me over the, over the course as well. Thank you. We'd like to open it up. All right, just one, one last one. A big, big, big parade for Akshita and Apple for doing an amazing job. Hip, hip, hip.